question is also about the Fed. Of course, traders have been obsessing about the lift off for 18 months now. <laughs> A 25 BPS Fed rate hike priced in. What could the Fed do or say to move uh, sentiment, to move markets? Well, the question now is uh, after Jay Powell uh, in January uh, kind of unexpectedly did something Fed shares usually don't do. Yes, I, I think I'm on board for a rate hike at that March meeting when we get done with the uh, bond purchases and we end that and the taper. But uh, now the question is how aggressive are they going to be? You've got uh, Wall Street firms saying six hikes this year, seven hikes this year. Let's look at a chart because I think this is potentially the big newsmaker when we get that uh, decision on Wednesday in the U.S., Thursday in Asia. It's the dots, the dot plot. Because do you remember in December uh, when suddenly from the when they were updating their economic projections which they do every quarter all of a sudden after only a couple of fed officials were looking for rate hikes this year more than half 10 out of 17 or 18 were suddenly looking for it that was the beginning of the fed's really aggressive pivot now it's march they're going to update their economic projections again projections again we're going to get new dots that's the first thing i bet you that investors and traders are going to be looking at when they see when they see the fed decision whatever it is jay powell's presser what is does he say? Does he sound cautious? Well, we have to get uh, uh, you know, ahead of the curve, but we're not going to go too fast. There's a lot of uncertainty, particularly with the war in Ukraine raging and seeing what that is doing to commodity markets and markets around the world. One more thing I want to throw in. I don't think people are looking at this very closely, Haslinda. Story on the Bloomberg Terminal today, very interesting about how a lot of bond veterans want the Fed to take the emphasis off rate hikes and start QT, quantitative tightening, right? You uh, buy bonds when you want to stimulate the economy. Well, you sell them them when you want to slow things down and particularly if you've got a yield curve that looks like it could invert and you do not want an inverted yield curve. Very interesting to me to see if the Fed all on its own comes out with any kind of statement or Jay Powell in particular because I expect he'll be asked some questions about that at that press conference too. But there's... Good mid-afternoon, <clears throat> 3.24 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the East Coast in the United States of America. I'm XRP Future Millionaire, and I reside in the great rainy and dark and cloudy state of Michigan. As the DXY moved back over 99 spot, 03 right now. Had a little bit of an uptick. I'm on my phone, guys, so I'm going to do the best I can. I wanted to bring you this because a lot of stuff is going on today, and we're about to hear what Paul is going to do, so we're still waiting. So the DXY jumped over 99 spot prematurely. We've had a major sell-off in gold and silver. Gold's down to 1919, which is about the lowest it's been all day. Same with silver. We had some minor rallies in the gold markets earlier. Some of them have managed to stay. Nothing much, so half a percent, percent and a half here or there. You've got speculative stocks that are selling off. Some of them have pulled back a little bit since earlier. We got the total crypto market cap up a half a percent. And we've got Bitcoin. Bitcoin's trying to up and down, up and down, but we're at 39,661, trying to pull back towards even for the day. We're still trying to see if we're going to go hawkish or if we're going to go dovish. If we have a 25 rate hike, we could have a little bit of a, you might have a temporary pullback, but I think that could bring a scenario for a fake out down and then pump. But if we have a 50 basis or 50 rate point hike, or he comes more hawkish, you would have a crash of the markets. Right now we've come back into the symmetrical. And that's what's going on here. We're in the overall bigger symmetrical. That's the 30 minute. <clears throat> the only thing that sucks about the 30 right now is there's really not a lot of volume that's supporting this move. So if we're going to break out of these areas, we're going to need more volume than what we're seeing right now. So it's just that simple. There's not much more we can do about that. Um, for our time frame to bring it out bigger, this is exactly how we look. If we break down out of this and we're tempting it, but we have tried to create a sneaky reversal here, it kind of looks like. So if we can pick up some volume... And that's when we could really see a big difference. So pay attention to the chart. See if we can break across that descending resistance because it doesn't leave much to the upside from here at only about 40,800. So, I mean, that's barely 1,000 points. So if it gets rejected there, it would just quickly come back down. XRP, it's same thing. We came down. 
We kind of made what could be a double bottom down here at about 74.8. We need to see how this works out. If we could get a point of confirmation somewhere in here, but right now we just made a lower low in the four hour time frame. That's the only thing we did. So we have to see how we react right now. If we get anything dovish, XRP is going to collapse and this will be used as a right arm. If we get anything that's less hawkish, and it's like, hey, we're not going to do anything yet, like this whole Russia thing or whatever he could say, Powell could say. Then you could have this pump that could happen if we get a 25 basis point hike and then not as hawkish. I'm telling you guys, it's set up for either or. So right now, like I feel like I'm in a desirable position because I can see how this plays out. The one thing I will say is in that four hour time frame, I mean, I'm not a rocket scientist, but that is an engulfing candle, except... One way to invalidate an engulfing candle, if there is any way, is to have less volume on that engulfing candle that ends up turning into mostly sell pressure. So this could be a fake out for our candle. We're still in a bearish continuation and all it needs to do is hook down and it's coming down to 63 or 57 or 52. So let's wait to see if we actually have some big move here coming before we get ourselves trapped. I'll update you when appropriate. I'm going to watch this like a hawk. Stay blessed, everybody.